welcome to the painting studio in the art lab located on the back counter. This studio is full of lots of materials and different types of paint. You will find a section for paint brushes, temper cakes, there are different color options and palette sizes, liquid tempera, and a section for watercolor and quill and ink. Today's video will focus on using liquid tempera paints. To work with liquid tempera, you will need a few materials. You will need either the basket or individual colors of liquid tempera. There's a basket full of rainbow assortment and directly behind it is a basket of liquid temperas that are primarily flesh colors or neutral colors for your paintings. You will need one paint tray and your choice of paintbrush. I recommend working with the small red flats and green rounds for tempera painting. Switching to some of the larger brush sizes in the back for any areas that are big and need to be filled in on your paper. In addition, you will need a water bowl you can fill your own at the sink area, then carefully bring it to your work spot. I have this work spot already set up with my piece of paper, paint palette, several brushes, a color of paint that I wish to use, water, and a pencil. To begin with liquid tempera, you always need to write your name and classroom code then flip over your paper. You can see that I have lightly sketched a design on my paper. Some artists choose to plan and draw their design first. Other artists prefer to jump right in with paint. Both methods are correct, so choose the one that works best for you. Next, I need to fill a tray with paint colors. So I can bring over an individual bottle or the basket of all of the colors. I need to be careful when I pour the paint because a little bit goes a long way. My goal is to pour out a little puddle of paint that is about the same size as a dime. So I will take off the cap, gently tip, and then squeeze until I see a puddle about the same size as a dime. It will spread out in the paint well a little bit, but notice you'll never need the color completely full. Later, when you're dipping your brush in here, it will spill out of the paint well if you've got more than a dime-sized amount. Next, think about the different brushes that you might choose to use. Different brushes do different jobs. This large flat brush is best for filling in big areas with a basic color. This is a small flat brush, again, great for filling in large or medium spaces. And these are called round brushes. There's a medium and a small size. They are great for doing things like outlines or small details. As an artist, I might need to use all of these or some of these to complete the design in my mind. So my next step is to begin painting and I can simply dip my brush into this paint. Because it's a liquid, it's ready to go directly onto my paper. As I become a more advanced painter, I might decide that I want to custom make some of my own colors in my paint tray. To do this, I'm going to combine two colors into an empty space on my paint tray. So I might take a little bit of blue and a little bit of this turquoise color, stirring them together. Notice when I've done that, I still have plain old blue that's usable and plain old turquoise that's also usable on my tray. I can then start to work this new color into my design and I can adjust the color as I go along if I'm not happy with how it looks 
on my paper. One nice thing about liquid tempera is that you can paint over any mistakes that you make, simply allowing the paint to dry before you try to paint over it. The other thing I want you to notice in this video is how I'm working with a paintbrush. I will always pull my color to the side or paint in a downward motion towards my body. I will never push my paintbrush away from me. You'll notice that the bristles start to fan out and these little stray hairs start sticking out from the side. That's called a bad hair day and it ruins the paintbrush. If I see this start to happen, I need to re-wet my brush so that the bristles all face the same direction again. Next door to my water is a sponge that I can use to tap off excess water instead of wasting paper towels. And then I am ready to return to my paint tray. Once again, if I choose to mix colors, I'll take a little bit of two different colors, stir them in a new place on my paint tray until I get the perfect color that I want for the idea in my mind. And then I use my paintbrush by pulling it down towards me or moving it across the paper sideways so that the, brush, the bristles are working in the same direction. To switch colors, I will wash my brush, tap it off on the sponge, and continue painting. When you work in art class, only pour out the colors that you think you'll need for the one class period. You can always refill if you run out that is preferred to filling the entire tray with colors that you don't use and throwing them away at the end of class. Cleanup looks like this. Put your brush in the water, carefully bring your wet artwork, finished or not, to the drying rack. Look for the drying rack that has your class code hanging on it and find an empty shelf to put your artwork. Then return to your table, gathering any dirty paintbrushes into that water, and carry both your tray and water bowl to the sink area. You are responsible for correctly sorting materials. Dirty paint trays go in this bucket along with dirty brushes. These will get washed in between classes. Students are not responsible for washing trays and brushes. Empty your water, rinse it out. Leave the water bowl upside down in the water bowl tray, being careful not to stack them like this. They get stuck together and then the bowl stuck inside will not properly dry. Your next step is to get a cleaning cloth, wet at the sink, squeeze out all of the water at the sink area, and then return to your work area, cleaning up only places where you actually see paint on the table. You should not wash the entire table if there's not paint everywhere. That will make cleanup take a little bit longer because the entire table is wet. Students who then want to fill out their studio tracker are unable to do that because the table is wet. So wipe the table, return the chamois cloth to the bucket, and then return any paint and unused brushes to the back counter. Thanks for watching.